This is Stefan Kinsella, June 3rd, 2013. This is the Kinsella on Liberty podcast. Uh, today I wanted to talk briefly about um, uh, one argument against modern patent, copyright, trademark, and even trade secret or intellectual property, uh, at least in the U.S. And that is the argument that um, all four of these laws are, are unconstitutional. Um, before I get into it, I have a long blog post about this, which I'll link to in the notes. But um, uh, one reason to make this argument is that one argument for IP by proponents is that if you argue against IP, they'll say, well, it's in the Constitution. <clears throat> and there are several problems with that general argument. Number one, it's not all in the Constitution, as I'll get to in a minute. Trademark is not in there, for example. Um, and second, um, uh, it's just an appeal to authority. Even if it is in the Constitution, it doesn't make it legitimate or justified. Um, and third, um, the Constitution authorizes Congress to enact patent and copyright law, arguably, but it doesn't require them to. So basically every argument in favor of IP based upon the fact that there's some constitutional language about it uh, is either an appeal to authority or is incomplete or fails to recognize that there's a grant but not a requirement. Um, uh, and I guess, fourth, you could say that the, the Constitution does not regard, say, patent and copyright as rights, as property rights or as natural rights, but as mere, like, temporary uh, policy tools to advance some, some goal. So it's more like a, a, a regulation or an intervention in the market. It's not really, shouldn't be viewed by the Constitution as a property right. But anyway, so let's, let's ask the question, is patent and copyright, or are patent, copyright, and trademark, and trade secret? Um, laws that are federal laws in the U.S., are they constitutional? And I would say there's a few arguments for why they are not. First, let's take trademark and trade secret. Um, there's, a, there's a clause in the Constitution which authorizes Congress to grant to authors and inventors for exclusive times, um, I mean, for limited time and exclusive right to their, to their inventions and writings, uh, but there's no authorization for things like what trademark and trade secret cover. Uh, in fact, the Lanham Act, which covers trade se trademark, um, uh, does not abolish state trademark laws, doesn't preempt them, doesn't purport to, and only covers um, uh, trademarks that are in use in interstate commerce. So they're appealing to the interstate commerce clause and a dubious, very broad interpretation of that clause, which the government has used over the years to, uh, in, the federal government has used to enact laws that are not specifically authorized in the grant of powers in Article I, Section 8 uh, of the Constitution. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm out for my morning walk, by the way, which is why I'm huffing and puffing a little bit. Um, in any case, so they rely upon the Interstate Commerce Clause, and even if it's broader than we would like, uh, it's clearly not broad enough to authorize this. And the same thing for um, federal aspects of trade secret law, um, like um, uh, which doesn't purport to um, regulate the whole field, but only certain um, theft of trade secrets. So those are both unconstitutional because there's just no authorized power, and the appeal to interstate commerce as a grant of power is uh, kind of ridiculously uh, overbroad. So. <clears throat> That's one argument against those. Now, for patent and copyright, which are authorized in the Constitution, first thing we have to recognize is that um, the, uh, the preamble to the clause says that uh, to promote the progress of science and the arts. And by the way, science refers to the copyright part because science means the, the knowledge sciences, you know, the arts, basically, is what we think of now, the, the liberal arts, the um, cre creations of the intellect or the mind, plays, novels, paintings, whatever, um, and the arts, the useful arts in that clause refers to what we think of as inventions now covered by patents because it was like artisans or you know useful artifacts that we make. We use those terms in sort of a reverse way now, but anyway, in any case, the, the, the clause says that the purpose of this grant of power is to promote the progress of science and the arts. 
And as a matter of fact, in the last 200 and so years since the Constitution <clears throat> was enacted, 1789, and the patent and copyright laws were quickly drafted right after that, um, there has been no evidence that these laws actually do promote the progress of science and the arts. In fact, there's tons of empirical studies and evidence that, uh, and reasoning that indicate that uh, these laws severely distort and even retard innovation um, and the culture. So that's another argument why the actual patent and copyright acts as written are unconstitutional because they do not fulfill the purpose uh, of the power granted to Congress. Um, so that's another argument. Yet another one some people argue is that these, these rights have to be for limited terms. And at least in the case of copyright, it was originally 14 years renewable by another 14 if you actively sought it. So that's up to 28 years max. And by the way, the 14-year term is a totally arbitrary number which came about because it was the, uh, it was the term of two consecutive seven-year apprenticeships. So the idea was that you know, these things are rooted in mercantilism and protectionism from England and Europe. And the idea is that if you give someone a, a patent on their production process or their, tr their craft, uh, as long as they have a monopoly for time to train two apprentices in it, uh, that should be good enough to insulate them from protection, uh, from competition or something like that. So the original 14 years came from that. But in any case, copyrights initially were 28 years max. But they've been successively extended over the years um, at the behest of lobbying by companies like Disney and others um, <clears throat> um, to, to, to the point where copyrights last well over 100 years now in most cases. Um, so you could argue that the, the propensity of Congress to keep extending these terms and even to put works back into copyright that were, that were public domain at one point uh, violates that limitation that the the grant has to be for a limited term. Uh, I mean, it looks like it's basically infinite now, or certainly extending an existing term doesn't mean it was limited in the first place. So that's another argument you could make. But I think there's uh, two or three stronger arguments which I rarely, in fact, never hear made, um, and that is this. There is a principle in, uh, a, it's called a canon, C-A-N-O-N, -N, a, a canon of, of a statutory construction or constitutional construction, which is that if you have um, two say, statutes or two constitutional provisions that are in conflict, then if they're both valid, you have to try to balance them out or make them somehow compatible with each other if you can. That's what the judges have to do. Um, but in, if one is drafted later than the other, then that one takes priority. That's why we can repeal statutes or pass new ones. That's why constitutional provisions can repeal others. So, for example, um, uh, the U.S. Uh, Constitution was amended to prohibit alcohol during Prohibition, and then years later, another amendment was enacted to to repeal Prohibition. So why do we not have Prohibition now? It's because the second, the later passed amendment came after the first one, and therefore is the one that now controls. So if you take that into account and recognize that the Constitution was enacted in 1789, Okay, with the copyright and patent clause, but that the Bill of Rights was added two years later in 1791, then if there's a conflict between a provision of the Bill of Rights and the, and the 1789 Constitution, then the Bill of Rights has to prevail. And I think there's a clear conflict. In fact, the courts have recognized that patent, uh, that copyright law, um, uh, 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 or the Copyright Act passed in accordance with the Copyright Clause does hinder free speech and freedom of the press because it prevents you from publishing what you want in some cases and saying what you want, expressing yourself in the way that you want. Which is, which if it was, uh, think of it this way, if there had been no Patent Clause or Patent Act and there was a First Amendment and Congress just enacted a patent law, now, it would, I mean, sorry, copyright law. Now, it would be unconstitutional because there's no authorized power for it, but it would also be unconstitutional because it would be an undue burden on free speech. There's almost no doubt about that. But because the copyright clause is in the Constitution, the courts feel like they have to try to balance these things. So they say there's a tension between 
free speech and the copyright interest. And of course, try to balance these things. Whereas in almost every other context, they don't balance it because they regard the freedom of speech right as a fundamental right that's very important. They can only be restricted by a compelling reason. So, um, the, instead of trying to balance these rights, I think it should be recognized that the First Amendment came after, and to the extent that there is an inconsistency between copyright and free speech, copyright and the First Amendment, the First Amendment has to prevail and the copyright law has to fall. And I actually think this is a very strong argument. Um, I think the courts fudge it a little when they've looked at this issue in the past and they sort of treat the Bill of Rights as being roughly contemporaneous with the Constitution because it was done just two years later and also because the Constitution was ratified on sort of the um, implicit promise or um, not implicit but the uh, sort of gentleman's agreement, the kind of handshake promise that there would be a Bill of Rights added soon. But this is, of course, not legally binding and not really the way this statutory construction works. Um, in fact, two years is not the same as, as zero. Um, 1791 is not the same as 1789. Um, I mean, you know, the Constitution was ratified in 1789, and it superseded the Articles of Confederation, which had existed, you know, just in the previous decade. So uh, there's no reason to believe that the two-year period makes no difference, that you should balance them, that you should treat the Bill of Rights as paramount to uh, any earlier provision of the Constitution. So, and by the way, this argument uh, extends also to uh, trademark and, copy and patent and even trade secret, especially patent. There are clear cases where patent is used to censor free speech as well as trademark. Uh, threatening letters are sent. Large companies bully people into not using certain words. Um, <clears throat> in my uh, blog post about this, I'll list some examples. Um, an even trade secret to some extent. But I think pr you could easily argue that trademark, patent, and copyright, especially copyright, uh, clearly uh, come into conflict with the First Amendment uh, and should be um, abolished on those grounds. And copyright also violates, I believe, the Fourth Amendment uh, and the Fifth Amendment and the Eighth Amendment, uh, which are also all in the Bill of Rights and all came two years later. And to the extent there's a uh, incompatibility, then, of course, the earlier clause, which is the copyright clause, has to fall. Um, and in, so the Fourth Amendment protects uh, people, people's right to be secure in their papers and property, homes. But, of course, we see raids being done all the time, invasions of people's property rights and, and uh, uh, interests in the name of copyright. Being, bills being proposed all the time that would ratchet this up, CISPA, TIPA, SOPA, uh, etc. Uh, think of just Kim.com, Kim.com's home being raided uh, in New Zealand. Now, that's not covered in the U.S., but still things like that happen here, too. Factories are raided for counterfeiting software, etc. I think that's a clear violation of the Fourth Amendment. The Fifth Amendment has due process, and of course you have uh, tons of measures. Uh, you have automatic statutory penalties for copyright breach. Uh, you, have, um, you have three strikes, three strikes and you're out, or I guess it's six strikes and you're out laws or, or provisions being done by the uh, ISPs, but sort of at the arm twisting of the government. Um, and that's basically uh, not the same type of due process that is required by the Fifth Amendment. Etc. So you could argue that uh, at least copyright violates due process rights as well. And I think it also clearly violates the Eighth Amendment, which prohibits um, uh, unjust um, or excessive fines and, and, uh, and uh, um, uh, you know, too harsh punishment for crimes. And copyright has the statutory penalties, which are clearly, I mean, hundreds or thousands of times greater than any possible measure of real damages, you know, $150,000 per act of infringement. There's been a study by uh, John Tehranian who, who, who says that uh, the typical modern Internet user who just engages in regular activities, not even mass, you know, not even a serious bit, load, uh, bit torrenting and piracy of movies, just emailing things to people, cutting and pasting, uh, sharing things online, um, is potentially liable for up to $4.5 billion a year of copyright damages because of um, these statutory penalties. 
So the current Copyright Act has statutory penalties, and it also has criminal penalties, which implicates the, the, um, uh, the cruel and unusual punishment part of the Eighth Amendment. So I think a really good case can be made that the penalties imposed by copyright law uh, are clearly um, a violation of the Eighth Amendment in terms of excessive fines and also uh, cruel and unusual punishment. So for all these reasons, I think that the current Copyright Act and the current Patent Act and the Lanham Act for trademark and federal laws regarding trade secrets are all unconstitutional. Any questions about this? Feel free to post them on the, uh, the blog. Thanks.